Hello everybody, hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 National Electrical Code Changes series. We're into Article 680 now, which of course is swimming pools, fountains, and similar installations. There's always a lot to talk about in Article 680, and this edition is no exception. So we're going to start with Section 680.5, which is for GFCI and now SP GFCI protection. We'll see what they have to say. All right, 680.5. GFCI and SP GFCI protection, that's special purpose GFCI. The rules for, F for GFCI and SP GFCI were made clearer. So 680.5A general says these requirements are in addition to those found in section 210.8 unless specifically noted otherwise. All right, there's always um, a bit of difficulty trying to determine how the rules in chapters one through four apply to a situation that's regulated by chapters 5, 6, or 7. So here we're in chapter 6, article 680, swimming pools, spas, fountains. So when we look at the photograph here, the receptacle on the post here, does that need to be GFCI protected? Well, it's outside, so of course the answer would be yes. 210.8 says if it's outdoors, dwelling unit or non-dwelling unit, it has to be GFCI protected. But chapter six has the right to modify or add or even remove requirements from chapter two. So chapter two said, yeah, that thing needs to be GFCI protection, protected. Could article 680 remove that protection and say, hey, receptacles within X feet of a fountain do not ever require GFCI. Yeah, chapter six could do that. that that's what 90.3 says. That's how the code book works. Chapters five, six, and seven supplement or modify the general rules in chapters one through four. So without this language here, there can sometimes be a little bit of a question saying, okay, well, does this rule modify chapter two or is this just in addition to chapter two? So they made it clear. The rules in article 680 uh, are in addition to any required by 210.8 unless specifically noted otherwise. So here in the photograph, we've got a receptacle, it's outdoors, it doesn't matter whether it's within one foot or five feet or five miles of a fountain, it's outside, therefore it requires GFCI protection. 680.5B, 150 volts or less to ground. If Article 680 requires protection for equipment supplied by branch circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground and 60 amps or less, then the device must be a Class A GFCI protection device. All right, so GFCIs come in a few different flavors. A Class A GFCI is what we all have in our, house, in our houses, what we have outside at commercial buildings. Class A GFCI protection operates between four and six milliamps of leakage current. Now, I say leakage current because I, I think that's probably the most accurate way to say it. The way a GFCI works is it measures the current on the circuit conductors, whether that means a hot and a neutral, or whether that means two hots or three hots or two or three hots plus a neutral. It, it has a CT that wraps around all of the circuit conductors and it looks for the same amount of current flowing between all the circuit conductors and that number needs to equal zero. In a properly operating circuit, it will equal zero. So if I have a 120 volt load and it pulls 10 amps, 10 amps on the hot, 10 amps on the neutral, the CT wraps around it, recognizes 10 and 10 equals zero, so everything is happy. If I had a 240 volt line to line circuit, like a motor, if it pulls 20 amps, then when 20 amps is going out on the black, it's coming back on the red, and then it goes out on the red, and it goes back on the black, right, with the sinusoidal waveform. So 20 and 20, put a CT around it, that equals zero, everything is going great. If I had a load that had both line to line and line to neutral, let's talk about your, uh, your range in your house. Of course, the cooking element for your range is 240 volts line to line, black and red. The individual cooking elements up top for the, uh, you know, where you, where you heat up your pans, those are probably 240 volt as well. But all the electronics are 120 volt. Certainly the lamp inside the oven is 120 volt. So let's say you have five amps, just to make the math easy, five amps of line to neutral loads and you have 30 amps of line to line loads. 
Well, going out to your range, you're going to have what? Two hots and a neutral. So the GFCI is going to wrap around those and it's going to say, okay, you've got 35 amps on the black wire and you've got 30 amps on the red wire. So you'd better have five amps on the neutral because 35 minus 30 minus five would equal zero. If there's a difference, so maybe it's 36, 30, and five, well, where is that other amp coming back from? Well, it might be coming back on the equipment grounding conductor, might be going back through a human being, and it's going to open the circuit. So a class A GFCI opens when the difference in current between all the circuit conductors is between four and six milliamps. Does not open if it's less than four, must open if it's greater than six. So that's a class A GFCI device. There was a class B GFCI device all the way back in 1968. They haven't been manufactured in over 50 years. So forget class B, you're not even gonna find one. If you see a class B, an actual class B GFCI, take a picture and email it to me. I would love to see one. I don't know anybody that has ever seen a class B GFCI in the last 50 years. So they, they're not around anymore. So if we read this one more time, if the circuit is 150 volts or less to ground, 60 amps or less, then you need to have class A GFCI protection if GFCI protection is required. Now looking at the photograph here, if we have underwater swimming pool lighting, generally speaking, that needs to be GFCI protected. Well, the exception says, protection is not required for equipment that does not exceed the low voltage contact rating, back in article 100, if the power source complies with 680.23A2. All right, so what this is saying is if you have low voltage lighting that comes from a swimming pool transformer, which is an isolating tri type transformer, very limited energy output, then you do not need to have GFCI. So here's my underwater luminaire. If that's 120, you need GFCI. If it's below the low voltage contact and it comes from a swimming pool transformer, then you don't need it. There's an informational note here that, that's kind of interesting. It, it reminds us that the high leg of a high leg delta exceeds 150 volts to ground, as do the ungrounded conductors of a corner grounded system. Okay, so maybe I've got a three phase swimming pool pump, right? Because that requires GFCI protection. If it's on a 120, 208 volt circuit, three phase swimming pool, then you need to have GFCI protection. Simple, right? 120, 120, 120, all of those are less than 150 volts to ground, so you would need class A GFCI. This is reminding us though, that if you have a high leg delta, two of those phases are gonna operate at 120 volts to ground, but the third one is gonna operate at 208. So if I have a swimming pool motor that's fed off of a high leg delta, I can't put that on class A GFCI protection. I would have to have it on a special purpose GFCI. And that's what 680.5C talks about. This is a new section addressing a new technology, relatively new, called special purpose GFCI protection. That's what we have here in the photograph. Now, I know that it's kind of difficult to, to see here, but if you can squint your eyes right there, you can see that you can actually change the set points. You can change it at six milliamps, which would give you class A protection. And then you can change it to 10 or 20 milliamps. And then if you wanted to go beyond that, that would not be any type of GFCI. That would be entering into what we call GFPE protection. So this device can, can be set to different levels. If we read what the code says, it says if article 680 requires protection for equipment supplied by branch circuits rated 150 volts to ground and 480 volts line to line, then SP GFCI protection, not exceeding 20 milliamps is required. Okay, so if we're in a swimming pool, I think most of us would agree that we want GFCI protection for the motor. You know, I, I'm really not interested in swimming in a swimming pool that does not have GFCI protection. I, I don't think I'm paranoid, I'm, I'm relatively sane. But there are certain gambles that I'm not willing to make. I'm not gonna swim in a swimming pool that's not GFCI protected. Why would I? You, you got a motor and water and everything else. Well, that would be even less safe if it was 480 volts, right? I mean, a 120 volt swimming pool motor that's not GFCI is spooky enough. What about a 480 volt three-phase motor? 
Well, until now we didn't, we, we acknowledged the risk, certainly we knew the hazard, but we didn't really have any good ways to alleviate it. So in the 2023 code, we're saying, listen, for those higher voltage motors, those higher voltage equipment, we can use special purpose GFCI. And there's an informational note they added that says an SP GFCI, class C, D, or E, opens between 15 milliamps and 20 milliamps of ground fault current. Okay, they work on the same principle as a GFCI. They monitor the difference in current between the phase conductors and between the circuit conductors. So if you want to call it leakage current, ground fault current, residual current, whatever you want to call it, an SP GFCI operates at class C, D, or E. All right, now you don't have to memorize all these classes. All right, class A is what we all know and love. That's what's in your house. That's what's in your commercial buildings. So looking at my little uh, flow chart here, starting at the orange one, if the circuit does not exceed 150 volts to ground, then we use class A GFCI protection and we're good to go, right? It opens between four and six milliamps and we're happy. What if the circuit does exceed 150 volts to ground? Well, then we keep reading and then we would have to ask the next question, which is, does the circuit exceed 300 volts to ground? Well, 300 volts to ground, that's not that common. 277.480, a Y connected system, does not exceed 300 volts to ground. So if it's 277.480, then my answer here would be no. And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna install a class C GFCI, which is 20 milliampers. So I would go back to that protection device that we just looked at. I would dial in the setting to 20 milliamps and there we go. Now, if the voltage does exceed 300 volts to ground, maybe it's a corner grounded 480 volt delta or an ungrounded 480 volt delta then the line to ground voltage on that would be 480. Again, not very common, but they're out there. So if I look at that and it says, yes, I do exceed 300 volts to ground, that's when I'm gonna kind of stop what I'm saying and say, if you're in that arena, you really need to look at the product standard and you need to get with a manufacturer of the equipment because then there's there's options all right if you exceed 300 volts to ground then you can use either class d or you can use class e depending on whether or not you size the equipment grounding conductor larger than is required and you have high speed tripping but again that's detailed in the product standard which i think is ul 943c if you know if you're if you're interested in such things so there you go gfci protection SP GFCI protection. The only place in the code right now that we're requiring SP GFCI is in Article 680. But I think in the future, we're gonna start seeing other loads that run at higher voltages that need to have SP GFCI protection. All right, we will see you on the next video.